So this is a short look at some of the images that come from the French Revolution period. So let's begin first with this uh, painting of the storming of the Bastille in July 1789, the start of the revolution. And let's ask, what did the Bastille represent to the Third Estate, to the revolutionaries? Um, the Bastille was a uh, fortress. It was, uh, it was not first and foremost a prison, uh, but rather uh, an armory where weapons were kept for uh, the French military. Uh, soldiers were uh, housed there. Um, and now at the time of the storming of the, of the Bastille, there were um, uh, a handful of uh, uh, political prisoners, uh, but the, um, the first and foremost purpose of the uh, Bastille was as a uh, uh, fortress, uh, armory, um, and uh, headquarters for the French troops. Uh, but to the eyes, in the eyes of uh, uh, the Third Estate, the Bastille represented the oppression um, that they experienced at the hands of the, uh, uh, the monarch and, and nobility. Uh, these two images are political cartoons from uh, the uh, 18th century that depict the um, uh, three estates and the inequalities of uh, those estates. And in our classes, we talked about the inequalities, um, and uh, all of you demonstrated... Uh, an understanding of what was wrong with that old system, or what was called the old regime. And um, uh, most of our work in the class, we would show that triangle image, if you recall. And at the very top, we would have clergy, and then we would have uh, nobility, and then the peasantry made up the majority uh, of the structure. And we talked about how the peasants' uh, class, they paid the most taxes, you know. And, um, and then we talked about how uh, these two upper classes, uh, the first and second estate, uh, they enjoyed the most privileges. And um, so if we look at, um, if we look at this, uh, uh, these two drawings, uh, let's begin with the one on uh, the right, actually. And, and what do we see? But um, we see uh, uh, seated in the front here um, a man who looks very much like a king. You know, if you look, he's wearing uh, all of the uh, symbols of a monarch. And then behind him is a man wearing a bishop's mitre, right? Right? That's the uh, uh, special ceremonial hat that a bishop would wear, right? And then behind him is a noble, right? Seated, portrayed here as a judge, okay? Um, that would have been, a, uh, that would have been a, an official title of a noble. Uh, but really, let's focus on the fella, let's focus on the fella here on the ground. And if we, if we look carefully, we see this, uh, uh, he's bleeding on his knees from having to carry the burden of these three. Um, and uh, then he's also uh, chained. Everybody look at the shackles on his feet and his hands. And he's also blindfolded. Okay, he's blindfolded. And so um, I think it's, uh, you know, to look at this cartoon that it is... Um, uh, satiring the inequalities of the three estates of the old regime. So here we have the, here's this guy's here, the bishop represents the first estate, and these two represent the second estates, because remember, nobility included the monarch, right? And so we have a total of three estates, and here this fella on the bottom, he represents the third. 
And then over on the left hand side, you see kind of the same thing, right? Um, so I'll go ahead and erase this, okay? Over here on uh, the left, you see the uh, same idea. This old man hunched over, walking with great difficulty and with a cane, is carrying on his back a nobleman, right? So this guy over here, we're going to put him as uh, noble, right? Over here, noble. And then here is clergy, right? He represents the clergy, uh, dressed with the, 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 what a, a priest would have worn then. And then the third estate would be this man hunched over like so, okay? Um, now here's an interesting cartoon, though, that shows a more positive hope for the revolution. And if you look at the uh, French on the bottom, it's basically right here, it's saying um, that uh, here it's hoping that the three estates can form a new constitution. If you look at that... Uh, if you look at that word constitution, what they're doing is they're doing with great effort, like on an anvil, they're trying to create a new constitution. And so that was the hope of the revolution. Notice that the revolution began in 1789, but Louis XVI um, lived until 1793. So I think one thing we have to clear up is that the revolution was not necessarily about getting rid of the monarchy. In fact, because if, if that was the case, how do you explain Louis XVI living from 1789 when the revolution began until 1793? Um, this is uh, one of my favorite illustrations. It's showing the Women's March on Versailles. And at the bottom here in, in the uh, French says, um, and so uh, Versailles to Versailles, you know, the, <coughs> excuse me. And so it's showing the march of the women. And so remember that a lot of the um, a lot of the anger and frustration of the third estate was over the bread shortages that were plaguing them, and that the and King Louis the Sixteenth's inability inability to deal with those. And then finally, we have one of my other favorite paintings, and this one is uh, by a wonderful artist named Jacques Louis David. Okay, so. Um, uh, and this is a painting, actually it's more of like a quick, um, it, it, it's, a water, it's, it, it's a very quick watercolor. The, the, the reason for the colors that you're looking at is called sepia tones. Anyway, what it's showing is the tennis court oath, okay? And what you're looking at is what looks like a, a gymnasium, maybe, or a big meeting hall is actually a tennis court. And tennis back in those days was a noble sport. Um, only the nobility could play tennis, and that was on that was on the law books, and so that's why the third estate occupied the nearby tennis court to the estates general. It's not because they wanted to play tennis; uh, it's because they wanted to protest the what they saw that inequality. So just a few images there of the uh, French Revolution to help us um, uh, see how these events were being portrayed.